We've seen NBC anchor Craig Melvin on the Today Show, the network's coverage of the Olympic Games, the Super Bowl, a few presidential inaugurations, and pretty much every major event that's crossed the news wires over the past few years. And along the way, Craig has made a few headlines himself. Craig Melvin is the co-host of The Today Show. He will also be front and center as the only network anchor to cover the entire duration of the Olympic Games. As a devoted husband, father, and man of faith, Craig understands the importance of turning to God for help. He garnered a lot of attention when he asked Bishop T.D. Jakes to pray for our nation on live TV. Um, 30 seconds for, for folks who weren't able to, to get to church uh, yesterday. I've never actually done this on the air. Uh, can you lead us in, in prayer for, for 30 seconds? Yes, I can. If our, our Father and our God, we bow our heads to you. Well, Craig Melvin joins us now via Skype. And Craig, we welcome you to the show. It's great to have you on today. Terry, it's good to be with you. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Well, we just saw a snippet of your viral moment with Bishop T.D. Jakes. Walk us through what happened. Well, you know, that was... That was early on in the pandemic when uh, we just didn't know uh, a whole lot about the virus and we didn't know a whole lot about where all of it was headed and people were scared, myself included. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys who, when I don't know something, um, I turn to God. And uh, in that moment, I felt like a lot of folks didn't just didn't know a lot, and um, I felt like we could we could use a moment um, with God. So it was um, it, it was not something that I I had obviously talked to a producer or or news management about ahead of time. I was just moved by the Spirit, and uh, fortunately for me, um, uh, Pastor Jake's does a lot of television. So when I gave him thirty seconds for a prayer, <laughs> he, he was able he was able to keep it uh, to pretty close to thirty seconds. Well, he, that was a wise thing to do because he's such a strong presence and he commands the presence of people as they come before yeah. the Lord. It was great. Well, what are some other ways that your faith influences how you cover a news event? Because as you said, you, you, you're you not always in a position where you can do that. No, you know, I, I, I discovered several years ago um, that there were a number of stories involving faith that just weren't or being told, um, we don't really cover uh, faith uh, a great deal. Over the last few years, we've done that. In fact, and I'm, I'm working on one now. Um, I love stories of redemption and forgiveness, um, and we're working on a story uh, now about um, a fellow named Kwame Kilpatrick, who was once the the mayor of Detroit, um, who. Uh, who fell on some hard times and was indicted and, and spent a number of years in, in federal prison. And while he was in prison, uh, he found the Lord. And, and now the, um, the, the one-time huckster is, uh, is, a, is a man of great faith, and, and he preaches the gospel. And I, I, I love stories like that. They speak to me, and I think they speak to a lot of folks. So uh, we're making more of a concerted effort to get stories like that. Yeah. Well, you lost an older brother to cancer. You lost a niece to pediatric cancer. These are the kinds of things that, that sometimes cause people's faith to falter. But your faith sustained you during those tragedies. How? They did. They did. Um, well, hey, first of all, my older brother, who lost to colon cancer at, uh, at, at 43. He was diagnosed at 39, but we lost him at 43. Um, he was a Baptist minister. Um, so uh, we grew up. With with faith, um, and I, I I am not one of these people um, that that only turns uh, to God uh, when things are things are at their worst. I also um, like to thank Him every morning. Um, I, I pray a prayer of gratitude to start the day. But it, you know, for me, during Terry, during those dark moments, and they were quite dark. Um, you find that sometimes there's really no one else to talk to, no one else to, to, to pour your heart and soul out to, no one else to ask for guidance. And so uh, when my niece was, was terribly ill many years ago, uh, she was diagnosed with a rare form of Ewing sarcoma at two, and 
and, and she was she was dead six months later. She was three when she died. Um, so that, and then my, my brother's illness, and it was um, several years. I mean, he he suffered for a while uh, with colon cancer. Um, I I had no choice but to but to lean on my faith, lean not onto thine own understanding, right? Exactly. You gotta get out, climb to the rock that's higher than you are, right? Recently, you published a book on fatherhood. Tell us some of the things that you learned from Pops. Yeah, you know, it's going back to stories of redemption. I'm, I'm always drawn to those types of stories. And um, there's no story of redemption that uh, hit closer to home for me than, than my father's story. My dad, and I write about it in the book. Uh, my father was a... Uh, a functional alcoholic for decades um, in South Carolina. And he was not physically absent. He was there physically. He wasn't there emotionally, certainly not spiritually. But um, And this is how I grew up. And uh, thank God for my mother, uh, who had to play the role of mother, father, um, uh, lots of other roles growing up. And, but my dad was in the house. He worked at the post office. He was a mail clerk uh, when he retired several years ago. And as I, as I got older and I, I started to achieve, you know, a, a, a modicum of worldly success, I, I, I found myself growing angry -er at my dad the older I got. I was resentful um, and it, it wasn't good. And so I, I had to, for my own sake, I had to get to a, to a point where I forgave him. And I did. And that, that happened several years ago, and, um, and he got into a, a, a drunk driving accident some years ago, and we decided to use that as an opportunity to try and stage an intervention. And it worked. And we, uh, we put him in an, an inpatient rehab uh, program down in Georgia, and he was in there for 10, 12 weeks, and he came out a different man altogether. Uh, and when he went in there, Terry, when he went in, he was 68, seems 68 years old, late in life. Uh, he, had been, he had been drinking for 50 years, um, and he hasn't had a sip of alcohol since. Uh, the man has a, a willpower and a determination uh, that I've, I've, I've never seen up close. But it's also a testament, Terry, and I write about this in the book, and it was one of the reasons I wrote the book. It's never too late. It's never too late to turn your life around. It's, it's never too late to decide that, that you want uh, to live a different life. It's never too late to, 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 to get that monkey off your back to shake that addiction. Um, but you have, to, you have to believe that with your whole heart. Um, and, and we were prayerful as well. I mean, it's a, it's a testament, to, it's a testament. To, to, to so many things. Yeah. It really, really is. Well, Craig, thanks for being with us. And most of all, thanks for being, you know, a, a person who's bringing faith into the marketplace with everything that you do, because God uses that. Thanks for being with us today. Great to talk with you. Terry, thanks so much for talking to you. I grew up with the 700 Club, so this is quite the honor. Awesome. Well, it's our honor to have you. Thanks. thanks. We'll be back with more of the 700 Club right after this.